Hey, stat students, time for another video. This one is going to be over the inference of means. Now, we've looked at the inference of proportions and the inference of the difference of proportions. This time, we're going to be looking at one sample uh, uh, t tests. Okay, we're going to be using t distributions to uh, to test sample to test the, the the mean of a population and also to uh, uh, to to estimate. Okay, to come up with uh, confidence intervals. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, best way to do this is to look at an example here. Here's our example. We have a bunch of uh, coyotes, okay? We're, uh, it says a random sample of 46 adult coyotes in a region of northern Minnesota showed the average age to be 2.05 years with a sample standard deviation of 0.82 years, okay? However, it's thought that the overall age of coyotes follows a normal model with a mean of 1.75 years. So what we're wondering uh, is, does this sample data indicate the coyotes in this region of northern Minnesota tend to live longer than the average of 1.75 years? Okay? So let's see. Does the sample data indicate that? That's like saying, is there evidence that? Whatever comes after that, that's your alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis is coyotes, coyotes in this region of northern Minnesota tend to live longer than 1.75 your null hypothesis would, of course, be that the coyotes tend to live exactly 1.75. So here are our hypotheses that the mean for this particular region is 1.75. Uh, that's your null hypothesis, and your alternative hypothesis is that the mean is greater than 1.75. All right? Now, if you remember when we were testing uh, proportions, what we would do is we would look back at the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to look at the sampling distribution of the sample mean. But in order to do that, we have to check our conditions and assumptions first. So uh, uh, as you remember, got to have a simple random sample or something similar. And fortunately, it has uh, somewhere around here. Uh, oh, hey, how about at the very beginning? A random sample. Man, it took me a long time to find that. Okay, so, uh, so yes, we have a random sample, and uh, independence, the 10% rule, um, I think it's safe to say that uh, uh, 46 is less than 10% of all the coyotes in this region, um, uh, or if not, I'm going to assume that that's the case. And, uh, and then finally, remember, uh, uh, N has to be big enough for our sample mean to be normally distributed. And uh, with proportions, that was easy. We would look at n times p, n times q, and make sure that it's at least 10. Well, we don't have a p this time. So what we have to do is we have to say either the, the, the population is going to be approximately normal, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, or n is big enough, okay? And in this case, we got both, okay? 46 is big enough. Usually 30 is about, if you've, if you've got an n that's 30 or bigger, uh, even with fairly weird uh, 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 skewed data, skewed uh, uh, population, um, you can still have a, a, an X bar, you can still have a sample mean that's going to be fairly normally distributed. Uh, but we're in better luck here because it says that uh, the overall age of coyotes follows a normal model with a mean, a normal model, okay? If your population is normal, then your sample uh, uh, then your sample mean is also going to be normally distributed. Okay? So, oh, here we go. If you remember, uh, the sample mean is normally distributed with, it's got the same mean as the population, but it's got a skinnier distribution because the, the uh, standard deviation is sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay? So in this case, that would be sigma divided by uh, the square root of 46. And what that means is if you take x bar, you subtract mu from it, and you divide it by this standard deviation here, you're going to get z, otherwise known as your normally distributed random variable with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Okay? That's the one that we can use our table A to look up all the probabilities on. Now, all fine and good, right? With one problem. We don't know what that is. Okay? We have no idea what the, standard, what the standard deviation of the population is. We know what our sample standard deviation is, but we don't know the standard deviation of the population. 
this is a real problem because uh, this, which is normally a standard normal random variable, this has some extra variability uh, added into it, uh, not knowing what, uh, 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 what sigma is. Naturally, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the standard error. And uh, where's our standard error? There it is. We're going to calculate the standard error of uh, x bar, and we're going to say it's s over the square root of n instead of uh, uh, sigma over the square root of n. And, uh, and so then we'll say, OK, well, now we have x bar minus mu uh, over the standard error of, of x bar. And this is what I was saying. The problem here is this itself has some uh, variability in it because the standard error depends on the particular sample that you gather. And so what we find is it's not a standard normal distribution. It's a little more pulled out. And it's something that we call a T distribution. Okay? So let's look at T distributions. And actually, let me go back for a second. It's a T distribution with, and see, you'll, you'll see this little n minus 1 here. It's a T distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay? What this means is there's a whole bunch of different t distributions, but now it's time to look at what those look like. Okay? Here is a t distribution. The blue line, or the blue curve, I should say. The blue curve is a standard normal distribution, and this gold curve here is a, uh, uh, a t distribution with, uh, I believe, one degree of freedom. And you can see it's, uh, it's the same basic shape, it's the same basic bell curve, except got way fatter tails than, uh, 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 than the standard normal one does. So, you know, let's say we got a, uh, 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 a, a t-score instead of a z-score, a t-score of negative 2. We can tell there's a whole bunch more of the data over here uh, in this tail here than there would be under a standard normal curve. Okay? Uh, and now here is a, uh, a t-distribution with 2 degrees of freedom. Here's another one with uh, is this, yes, this is three degrees of freedom, four degrees of freedom, five degrees of freedom, 10 degrees of freedom, and here's 20 degrees of freedom. And as you see, as the degrees of freedom go up, 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 this gets closer and closer and closer to a normally distributed random variable. It's still, it's, it's still, if you can look over here, the tail is still fatter, okay? So it's important. It used to be uh, uh, years and years ago uh, that once you got up above like 30 or 40 degrees of freedom, you'd just switch over to a standard normal uh, 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 table and use those values. However, now that we have computers, we really don't have to do that. And there is, there is a difference, okay? There's, there's a difference in the probabilities. And you can see that this tail is still fatter than uh, the, the blue tail there, the tail of the uh, uh, standard normal random variable. Okay? So, all you really need to know about T distributions is they're unimodal and symmetric, okay, about zero. Okay, the mean is zero. Uh, they're just, they, they look just like standard normal uh, random variables. The, the, the curve looks just like a standard normal curve, only it's fatter, it's more spread out, okay? So, back to our problem here, okay? Uh, let's uh, go ahead and calculate the standard error of x bar. I'm getting uh, 0.82 over the square root of 46 is about 0.1209. I hope you get the same thing. And uh, so what that means is our test statistic, x bar minus mu over the standard error, is about 2.4813. Now, if this were a normally distributed random variable, I mean, if this were a, 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 a Z statistic instead of a T statistic, uh, we'd look at that and we'd say 2.4 uh, uh, standard deviations above the mean, that's really high, okay? We're, we're going to have a tiny p-value uh, given that our alternative hypothesis is greater than. Uh, however, this is a T statistic, not a, a Z statistic and it's a T statistic with 45 degrees of freedom. So yes, it's going to be high, but we're not quite sure how high, and we would have to calculate that. The best way to calculate it is with a calculator, and you find out that the probability that, that a, 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 T, um, a, a, a T random variable with 45 degrees of freedom uh, is greater than 2.4813 is slightly less than 1%. So 
still small enough. That is, of course, our p-value, and uh, what that means is uh, I think I would, uh, I would reject this null hypothesis, and I'd say, yes, this does give us evidence that uh, uh, the coyotes tend to live longer than your average. Okay? Now, here's the, uh, uh, by the way, than your average of 1.75 years. That's what I meant to say. Okay? This is uh, the table B that we frequently see in uh, our, our AP stats class. And uh, these, this is our, our, our table of T distribution critical values. Okay? Now, the table A that we used, that was normal distribution probabilities. These are actually the critical values, okay? So what it means is it's the, it's the T star at which you have this particular probability over here. And let me, let me tell you what I mean. Here's, let's say, six degrees of freedom, okay? And let's say you want to do a hypothesis test uh, where your alpha, your uh, uh, significance level is 5%, okay? That's an easy one, all right? So we'll go to six degrees of freedom, we'll come over to 5%, and this is our Z star. So basically what we find is, if, uh, if this, if, I said Z star, I'm sorry, T star, okay? It's a T distribution. So what we find is, if the, our test statistic, if our T statistic is higher than this thing, we can reject the null hypothesis because it's gonna have a smaller p-value than 5%. Okay, so uh, let's move on down the table to where we were. Remember, we were looking for, uh, it's always n minus one degrees of freedom. Our n is 46, so that means we want 45 degrees of freedom. And uh, I'm looking over here, and uh, I got 40, I got 50, and uh, let's see, let me go back again. Let, let's say I wanna do, uh, I want my alpha to be 1%, okay? So here's my 1% column, and I come down here to, so 40, right there, okay? 40 degrees of freedom gives me 2.423. Uh, 50 degrees of freedom gives me 2.403. So I'm just gonna interpolate and say 45 degrees of freedom will give me a T star of 2.413, okay? So I'm gonna come back over here, and I'm gonna say, uh, 2.413, that's the Z star that I was using. Since my particular statistic is higher than that, and I know that there's only a 1% uh, a chance of getting this thing or higher, I got that from the table, that means that uh, uh, my p-value is gonna be less than my alpha, alpha this time being 1%. And I would say, reject that null hypothesis, okay? And I would say there's statistical evidence that the coyotes in this region tend to live longer than the 1.75 years, okay? And uh, why is that? Because there's a less than 1% chance of getting uh, data like this, uh, this, uh, this much higher than uh, uh, 1.75, okay? So, um, what about confidence intervals? Well, Here's our, uh, here's our mean, here's our standard error. Uh, the confidence intervals for uh, means are very similar to the confidence intervals for, for proportions. Uh, you would have, instead of a p hat, you have an x bar, but you still have plus or minus your critical value times the uh, standard error, okay? And this is 95%, but it could be, you know, 99%, 98%, whatever, okay? So, uh, now, how do you find the z star? Well, just like we did before. Uh, I'm looking for a 95% confidence interval, and so uh, if you look down here, confidence level, 95%, easy. Uh, here's, uh, it's gonna be, where is it gonna be? It's gonna be right there, okay? Here's 40, here's 50, so it's gonna be right in between these two things, and if I interpolate the average of 2.021 and 2.009, I think it's 2.015, and uh, so that's gonna be my my T star, every once in a while I'm gonna say, golly, look at that. That should be a T star, not a Z star. I apologize. Uh, so there it is, our critical value. And uh, so we end up with X bar plus or minus the critical value, like I said, that should be a T star there, uh, times the standard error to give us our margin of error of 0.2436 and 
That means our 95% confidence interval is between 1.81 and 2.29. And what we would say is, I am 95% confident that the average age of coyotes in this region is between 1.81 and 2.29 years. All right, easy enough. Now, uh, we kind of breezed by earlier uh, uh, what we do if, um, if, if the population is not normal, okay? Let's say that we were not told that the population is normal, and let's say we have a really small sample size, say, you know, five or six. Uh, well, usually what you do is you, you look at your sample and you say, does it look like this sample came from a, a, a normal population? And, and uh, how do you do that? You look at it and you say, well, look at the histogram. Look at the box plot. Does the box plot look symmetric? Does the histogram look unimodal? If so, yeah, I would say it probably came from a uh, population that is unimodal and symmetric. Another thing that you can look at is the normal probability plot, okay? And what the normal probability plot is, uh, it looks something like this. It's a, it's a, a you can do it on many calculators and uh, uh, computer uh, packages. And what it does is it plots on the x-axis, it plots the z-scores of your data points, and on the y-axis, it plots the expected z-scores given uh, the, 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 the sequence of the points, okay? And so basically what you gotta look for is, you look at this and you say, does it look fairly linear, okay? If it looks fairly linear, then this looks like data that came from a, a normal uh, population. Sometimes at the very end, you'll see a little twist one way or another. Uh, I wouldn't get too uh, uh, worried about that. You basically want to see is if, if it's curving like that or if it's curving like that, that indicates that it's fairly skewed data and uh, you, you're going to have a problem, okay? But if it looks like that, great, good to go and move on. All right, speaking of moving on, our uh, next video is going to be the inference of the difference of means and, uh, well, I'll... See you then.